it's Janine. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I have not vlogged anything for quite a while. I kind of lost my sojo there for a little while. Um, we had, well, it was two things. I had, um, we had an older cat who I've had since he was a kitten and he was not well for quite a while. And, uh, that took so many hours out of my, probably an hour and a half a day taking care of him. And then he ultimately passed away. And around the same time, I had a couple of sewing projects that weren't so, um, did not turn out as planned. So I kind of lost my sojo. Um, but last weekend, I finished something that had taken me for absolutely ever, and it turned out really well. So I'm feeling like sewing again. And I do have a few things that I wanted to show you that I have made in the last six weeks or whatever, and some things that I'm planning to make. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is this top, which is the Mix It top from the sewing workshop. Um, the one I made is the short sleeved one here, and this has a keyhole opening and a button. And what I liked about this top is that it's made out of a woven. So it's sort of shaped like a t-shirt, but you make it out of a woven. Um, and actually there's also a tank top pattern on this pattern that you make out of a net. And when Linda Lee demonstrated this to us when she was here in March, she had thrown on a piece of like sheer fabric, I think it was a mesh or something, on top of the tank on the front. So it kind of had that ready to wear look. And that's something I want to try. But anyway, made the mix it top out of this just really fun, basic cotton from Hobby Lobby. And I did not adjust anything, no alterations on the pattern. So that was um, a happy win several weeks ago. I like her patterns. The instructions are really good. She does the front opening differently where it's actually um, a fully finished facing on the inside. And then she does her collar differently than any others that I've seen. So the seam for the collar is actually here in the middle. It's not at the edges. So you don't have the problem with a fold showing at the edge of a collar. Um, so I really liked how she did those, and those are certainly tricks I'm gonna use on other things. So I like this so much that I made a second version, and this is the second version here. Um, I'm gonna put up a picture of me in this, and you can compare and contrast this one versus this one. Exact same pattern, exact same size. And in the linen, I just don't like it for a couple of reasons. The first one is the linen just doesn't hang the same way. It sticks out so it looks makes me look bigger and I honestly don't like that very much. But the other thing with the linen, there's a little bit of gathering on the sleeves and on the linen, it's really pronounced and it makes the sleeves stick out. I mean, honestly, this is the exact same pattern with two different fabrics. So um, into when I finished this one, I was not very happy with it. And I'd been so happy with this colorful one. So I sent a note to Linda Lee and sent her pictures and said, should these sleeves look the way they do? They look awfully poofy. And uh, she wrote back the next day. She measured the pattern and said, no, it's right. And she included some instructions on how to properly set in a sleeve. Um, I am, you know, I had some sewing classes in grade seven and then my mom taught me some things, but mostly I'm a self-taught sewist and no one had probably, well, maybe when I was like 16, someone showed me how to properly set in a sleeve, but I don't remember. Um, I kind of follow the instructions on the big four patterns and they probably aren't the best. So anyways. Linda Lee kindly sent me some information on how to properly set in a sleeve. And I learned that I was doing two things wrong. And they're pretty apparent in this. Doing wrong. 
is I was sewing two rows of gathering stitches. She suggests sewing one row. The second thing I was doing wrong is sewing, I would always sew the gathering stitches within the seam allowance on the sleeve because I figured I didn't want the basting stitches to show and I'm, you know, sometimes you just get lazy and you want to pull them out easily and if they're on the other side it leaves a mark. So she said stitch the basting stitches right on, either just inside or right on the seam line. So um, I did that and then the third thing that I was not doing was pressing the sleeve head to give it some shape before I stitched it. So this one I did press the sleeve head. You can actually see there's a little bit more shape to it. The fourth thing, probably the biggest thing I was doing wrong, is that maybe I was getting off of the stitching line. Maybe I was stitching at 3 8 of an inch in some places instead of 5 8 of an inch. And of course, if you do that all the way around a sleeve, if you stitch at 3 8 instead of 5 8 you wind up with a much bigger sleeve head, which means you're going to have a lot more gathering, a lot more poofiness. So um, after reading that information, I decided to, I practiced what she taught me on something else I made. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But then I redid the sleeves on this. I unpicked them and on one side the sleeve is really much better. On the other side, not so much. I know why this one is not so much because I don't think I got this on the 5 8 inch seam line. But anyways, um, really, that's a, such a long story. I'm so sorry. Um, really like this pattern. I recommend it if you are a woman with a more grown up body type because it's certainly sized for an adult woman. Um, fast to go together. She has some nice tricks. So that's the sewing workshop mix it top. Um, I have three other things I want to show you that I made and I'm going to show them on the side which other side it works out best. In March, I think, I picked up some fabric at uh, fabric, markfabrics.com and um, one was a stretch woven that I bought for a skirt. Look at this, she's just looking at me and loving me. Um, stretch woven that I bought for a skirt and I did not have much luck finding a skirt pattern so I went back to the flyer from Fabric Mart Fabrics and I picked up the pattern they recommended which is Pamela's Patterns Magic Pencil Skirt. So this is two pieces of pattern that are exactly the same. But she gives you some really good hints on how to shape the skirt. You start out with two basted darts front and back and then you can move them, make them deeper, remove them. And then there's just a very simple fold over top with the, uh, top waistband with the elastic on it and uh, I wound up with a skirt I cut a medium oh my god I gotta love it just because I cut a medium um, I wound up with a skirt where I did not put darts in the front because I have a belly but I did put darts in the back and it fits so well and it's perfect for the fabric that I used this pattern only needs a yard of fabric so if you have something stretchy and you want a skirt that looks like a Bowden skirt or a Talbot skirt, this is really perfect for that type of skirt. So I made that and at the same time and the same sale from Fabric Mart, I picked up a poppy red jersey. It's a pretty beefy jersey, but it matched the skirt perfectly. So while I was buying the pencil skirt pattern, Pamela's patterns also had kind of a, a stretchy, tunicky top. So I picked up that pattern as well, and it's the pleated back flowy tee. So this is either a scoop neck or a less scoopy neck. The front is straight, the back has a yoke and a pleat. So it has some nice shaping. 
and the sleeves that I did are three quarter length with a fold up tab on them. Again, this pattern is shaped for real grown up women. And again, I cut and sewed a medium. Okay, vanity sizing really works for me. Super simple to put together. And again, excellent instructions. What I learned from this particular pattern is she suggests using knit stay tape, not just on the shoulders of a knit top, but also around the neck before you attach the neck band. So it was a, that's a very helpful tip and my neck band was much more successful than several others. So I made these two to go together and I actually wore this little outfit on Mother's Day when I went home to visit my mare. Um, the other main project, uh, two other projects. I made a third version of the Cali top. Um, this one, very much like the other ones, I made it tunic length. And the fabric that I used is, I think it's called a bird's eye PK. It's a very fine, small textured PK in white, 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 which is what I wanted. Um, I'm not sure how thrilled I am with this. I haven't actually worn it and I bet I made it, oh, I don't know, over a month ago. And when you look at it, tell me what you think, because to me, it looks like the PK is just a little bit too, like it's a little too firm. It's not drapey enough for this top. Um, I think the only time I'll wear it, I've washed it three times now, see, and it is softening up with, with every uh, wash cycle. I put fabric softener in with it, but I think that it's one of those things, it's gonna be a big shirt, so it's gonna have to be worn over either a, a straight skirt or skinny pants, like leggings or something. But take a look at this and tell me what you think. The only thing I dif different on this, I didn't want to have to find buttons because I love the texture of the fabric. So I used little white sew-on snaps that I found when I was home in Canada. Never seen little white ones here in the States, but these were perfect because the placket just looks so clean and um, unmarred. But tell me what you think about this top if, if I don't know what to do with it or what you think I should wear it with. Period. Uh -huh. And um, I started sewing a top like right after Mother's Day. So that's what, the second weekend of May, and I just finished it this past weekend. And um, the fabric that I used was a poly with little sewing bee, little bees, but I think sewing bee immediately, little bees all over it. And it's a very, it's a lightweight, I don't know what kind of polyester this is. When you look at it, if you know what it's called, let me know. I can't think of it. Anyway, when I, as soon as I saw this fabric, I thought it would be really cute for a top with a tie. I don't know why I was thinking that, but it looked like a top with a tie to me. Um, so I picked up a couple of meters of the fabric, brought it home, and kind of hummed and hawed for quite a while about what um, what I wanted to make. Get my sweetie. Um, I looked at patterns online, and then I realized that I actually have a Vogue pattern that I've made twice that has a tie. Um, the tie is a little bit different. So I pulled out that pattern and that is Vogue 9204. Um, I have made this version and I've vlogged about it um, twice. The first time I made it in a really nice cotton jersey that I got from Elliott Berman Fabrics. And very happy with that top. It feels like a pajama top. The fabric is so soft and I've worn it, I bet, two or three dozen times. The second time I made this pattern, I used some kind of a, um, with one of those digital print satins from Joanne, and I wasn't as happy with it. I made it with short sleeves, and I think I had to unpick some stitches somewhere, and because it's a digital print, it actually showed holes afterwards, so um, I got rid of that version. So that kind of turned me off of this pattern. But then I thought it would be really good for this. So um, 
I, I wanted to make this, but I thought it was a little bit boring, especially the sleeves. And I knew I didn't want the short sleeves because I hadn't liked the short sleeves in the previous version I made. So I decided to do my first ever Franken pattern. Um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do if I wanted ties on the sleeves. So I dug around in my pattern stash and I found a pattern that I had never cut, but I always liked and it's McCall's 7053. And on version A, there are the little sleeve, there's a section of the, the lower sleeve is gathered and then there's a little cuff added. So because that section goes on to a straight sleeve, like in the Vogue pattern, I thought that I could just put the two together. And I did my first ever Franken pattern. I know this is totally uncomplicated, but I had to use some math and um, figure a few things out. And now that it's done, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I wore it to work yesterday, and as soon as I got in the elevator, somebody said, ooh, bees. So I'm happy with that. And it's a lightweight fabric, but because um, air conditioning at work can be a little bit cold sometimes, and I have finally figured out that even though I live somewhere where it's 90 degrees most days, it's still really cold at work. So this year I'm not going to stick to just making tops that are sleeveless. I'm going to continue to make jackets and cardigans and garments with sleeves. So that was all just a fun little learning process. Um, the B top, when I finished it, I was really happy. And it took me about four weeks to make, five weeks probably in total from the time I started thinking of patterns. But it turned out well, and uh, it helped me to feel a little more confident about sewing again. What I'm going to make and what I've bought. Um, I have something that's about half done. I'm making myself a birthday dress. And um, this is the fabric. This is a kind of a Poochie-esque print. This is a knit, and it's got a little bit of texture. Um, the outside has a tiny bit of texture where the wrong side is just a little bit more smooth. You can see there's really a strong line of the knit. Um, very drapey. When I bought this last summer, and I bought this at Olga's Fabric Lane in Calgary, when I bought this last summer, I thought I'd make a tunic, but then I was messing around with it on the mannequin many weeks ago, and I thought, maybe, you know what, I've got two full meters, maybe I can make a dress. So I decided to make a dress out of it and the pa this is actually the dress. Um, right now I am working on the neckband. So I just have to get my cover stitch sorted out. I stitched it once the other day and I unpicked them because I wasn't happy with it. Um, but it's just a straight sort of a-lined t-shirt dress. Simplicity 8595. So I am making the short sleeve version, the short one, but I added four inches to the length and I made it just a smidge wider from the waist down. So hopefully it will have a little bit more sway and flow to it. This I may have done tonight. If not, I'll have it done for sure tomorrow night. Um, but um, this is just a fun summer dress. I wish I could find the fabric. It was Telio. I've tried doing a Google search on the picture and can't find it. But So that's what's being made immediately. Then I bought a second piece of fabric in Calgary at Fabricland when I bought the bee stuff. And it's this teal. This is a rayon and spandex knit. Um, Nice, light weight. I've washed it once. It didn't shrink. So I don't think I'm going to wash it again. Um, and this is going to be another Pamela's Patterns pleated back flowy tee. The one thing I didn't like about the coral version or the poppy color version that I made is that the fabric's a little bit heavy. So it doesn't float on the back where the pleat is. It kind of just hangs there and it gets caught on your booty. So I'm going to try making this in this lighter weight 
jersey, rayon jersey. Um, and I will make it with three quarter length sleeves because I'll be wearing it in air conditioning at work. Um, last week, Top Stitch Atlanta had a free shipping sale and I only live, I don't know, 12 miles from Top Stitch. But this is Atlanta. It could take me an hour and a half to get there. So they had free shipping, so great, rather than drive downtown, I had, I ordered some stuff from them. The first piece I got is this eggshell art gallery, just a really basic cotton jersey. And this will be version number 10 of the Deer and Doe Plantain, just a basic. This, I love this, so it's upside down. I've seen a few people on Instagram with tops made out of this jersey and the print is so pretty. My husband immediately said, it looks like something from the 80s, but that's okay because I have really fond memories of the 80s. Um, but one of the people that I've seen wear this was wearing sort of like a bat wing top and I don't know if I'm gonna make anything like that, but if you have any suggestions for patterns for this jersey, um, please let me know because this is something I want to make up and wear this summer. Um, I just think it's so pretty and bright and it's a little bit different and it looks more 70s than 80s. Um, here in Atlanta, there's a mail over order furniture company, <clears throat> excuse me, called Ballard Designs. And Ballard has a little retail store downtown and then they have a really big clearance place up in the burbs and we went up there on memorial day um, didn't buy any furniture but ballard sells a lot of drapery and home deck upholstery type fabric and they had a ton of stuff marked way down everything was 60 percent off so i just picked up a couple little pieces the first one is this um <coughs> excuse me this kind of tropical leaf thing. I just got um, a yard of this and it was like four dollars and I'm going to make a table runner for the table out on our screen porch um, just for summer. Something I know I can throw in the wash if necessary. But the other big piece that I got that's going to kind of be a project, um, we I'm going to use this to redo the cushions on our chairs in the kitchen. Um, when I bought the cushions for our chairs, I went to Ikea and bought eight chair cushions that were like $3 each. They're just plain boring beige, but I knew that I couldn't get foam for that price, cut to the right size. So eventually I figured I'd just redo the cushions. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do those out of this. And I think that this will kind of hide stains. Um, but this was only $4. No, sorry, $6 a yard. So um, I got three yards of that to do 10 cushions. That's still pretty cheap home deck. I can't believe that next weekend is the long weekend, both in Canada and the States. Um, on July 5th and 6th, my sewing guild is having an in-town sew-in. So that's like an in-town sewing bee daily retreats where you just take all your stuff down and sew. We all get together. And I'm looking forward to that and I will get, I might just take the chair cushions or something like that and do those when I'm there because they're big, huge tables for cutting things out. Um, but I might wind up doing some garments. Uh, I'm very pleased to be enjoying sewing again. And she and I miss our other little friend, but um, life is getting back to normal. And I will be, I've got um, at least one blog post that I'm doing, just have to take pictures, but I will be posting more videos here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and stopping by, and as always, please comment if you see anything, have ideas. I'll see you really soon.